Fantastic. I'm happy you're joining me in this first exercise um, as we step into our webinar sessions. And this one is creating or designing your values, vision, and mission. And again, these are geared towards your personal values and also your career and what you want to do with that. And I do certainly encourage the managers that once the team has done these for themselves, it seems like a perfect progression to step into the veterinary hospital's values, vision, and mission statements. Now, some of you have told me you have mission statements, but it may be time to reevaluate them and see if they're still pertinent to the team that you have, the services you provide, and the community that you serve. All right, with that, we will step into our exercise. As you know, your career and your life and your passion is in your hands. It's not for anybody else to decide what that looks like and, and how you have created and molding your life. And, and what you've done in the past is a reflection of all that you are, but that does not necessarily mean who you have to be tomorrow. So you can, I say to yourself that this is what I've done in the past. And through these exercises, I realize now that I really want to grow myself and grow my career in this way. And that's powerful. It's very powerful. So you alone can identify your personal values, vision, and mission. And as a team, you can begin to design that within your veterinary hospital. I have asked that you uh, read this article prior to stepping into this exercise. It's geared towards um, strategic planning and may even be in that nonprofit arena, but I felt it was very good in defining why you do this and how you do it and fundamental in the creation of these statements. So if you haven't read that, please feel free to stop the video now and print these off and read through it, because I do think it's going to help you as we go through this project. And be bold, bright, and courageous as you design this for yourself. There's, there's nobody else that can do this for you except you. And it, as we mentioned in our presentations in person um, in Arizona, is we rarely give ourselves the time to really identify what brings us joy and bliss and what is our passion and giving ourselves the tools for success in that by speaking with our manager or our veterinarian or, or owner in the practice and say, saying and explaining, this is what really drives me. This is what motivates me. How can we bring more of that into my daily experiences? So let's first look at a ship. And what does it take to navigate a ship? Well, obviously you're going to have sailors and people who know different rigors and different aspects of this ship experience. We're gonna need a map to create where we're going and how we're gonna get there and maybe detours if the weather is bad. We need to know point A to point B and are we going to get there in the fastest route? Are we going to go leisurely? What does that look like? Obviously, we're going to need the wind or something that's going to be generating us to get there, um, some kind of power source, obviously the water and safety boats. We need all of this to navigate a ship. And even though this is an analogy in what that looks like, it's very similar to a veterinary practice, but even more engaged because we know more about a veterinary practice. So what does it take to navigate a hospital? Obviously it takes a team. As we've mentioned before, the, the building is just a shell. It's a cold building. It's the team inside of that that makes it warm and inviting. Yes, we need a building and there will be different sizes and, and structures and designs in that. And it's also a reflection of who we are and, and how we're going to be providing those services. Obviously, we need clients and we are there every single day for those clients and their patients. Sometimes we forget that. 
Yes, we need to have patience and, and animals to serve. We need to have a direction. We've talked about this before, that veterinary hospitals that have a strategic plan and these statements in values, vision, and mission just have a common purpose. They have a common goal and they know it together and they strive to meet that on a daily basis. And it's it's their rudder, it's that wind, it's those things that, that's similar to a ship keeps us going. We have to have goals, individual goals, hospital goals, team goals, um, things to strive for and definitely celebrate once we reach, we achieve those goals comes along to having successes as well and celebrating those. Successes in career growth, successes in the cases that we've done, successes in uh, expansions, maybe services we're providing, but identifying them and embracing them. This common purpose, it's one of the things that we need as a team. There hasn't been much conversations as to who and what is a team, but teams need to have shared common, shared values, common purposes. They need to have the knowledge and strength in that and be able to move forward in support as a team. Obviously, we will need to know and understand the bartering and the value of the services we provide and the exchange of money for that. Many times we've mentioned that if your client is unable to provide whatever services you are doing, then th that's a value to them. Otherwise, they'd be just staying at home and doing these things by themselves. But they come to you because you are professional and you fulfill a certain need in that experience that they're having and they want with their pet. And there would be within the navigation of a hospital ideas and ideals around wages and salaries and what that looks like. Yes, there would be inventory within that hospital and it would be so well maintained that you would not run out of anything that you need, but it would be maintained at the tight level that um, is profitable and allows to offer the services you need at the time you need them. I believe inventory management is a, a whole entity in and of itself that um, makes or breaks a veterinary hospital. And then we're, we will be navigating through our values, our vision, and mission. So it takes quite a bit to establish and maintain a veterinary hospital. The first statements that we would create are around values. And I think that's something that's sim simpler in its approach because values are what we personally believe. They are the beliefs we hold dear to us, allowing us to find direction and drawing to us others with similar values. When we know what we cherish, identifying those aptitudes and attitudes, we draw more of that to us. And you may recall in the colors exercise, each of those colors had strengths and weaknesses and identified values. So that might be another place too, to help you identify your values or just what resonates with you in that, that collective group of, of words. So these are examples of things that I value. I strongly value relationships, being creative and problem solving, putting me into a group and allowing me to collaborate and problem solve, I am, I'm there. I do value sustainability and what that looks like for me personally within my home and within my, my group and my family. And I do value, value people being courageous or showing courage. So think about that for yourself. And you may choose to um, stop this video and contemplate this and continue to write this into your exercise, or you may continue just to roll through the video. So personal beliefs, and there's more questions around this too in your exercise. What do you believe about being a team member and serving pets and pet owners? There's questions that says, in regards to serving pets, I believe, and you fill in the blank. In regards to my work day, I believe this. And in regards to serving pets and pet parents, I believe this. 
So for what does that look like for you? Now stepping into our personal vision. Visions are on the lofty side. They're, they're creating this big idea and they're free of boundaries, all boundaries, because if we place boundaries on ourselves, we wouldn't be able to flourish if, as we can. So be imaginative, be creative, and think of this without judgments as well, without the restrictions of um, what does the money look like? What does the support look like? How, how am I ever gonna get that? That's not the question. The how is not what we're dealing with here. It's just this lofty, big idea what I want to be and do that perpetu perpetuates my passion. Again, I don't think we allow ourselves to create in this real imaginative way without boundaries and without judgments. So here is an example of my vision to be a physically fit, spiritually hip granny with time and resources for friends, family, and grandchildren. I passionately lead by example while assisting others to find their groove and fulfill their personal goals and aspirations. So that's my personal vision. What is your personal vision without boundaries or judgments? And in the exercise, it steps into more career questions as to um, what that looks like in serving pets and what you might be doing in three years. And how do you see yourself offering extraordinary care in three years? Again, this doesn't even need to be something that's currently in your repertoire or that you even have access to this right now. It's thinking bigger than that, beyond any of your boundaries. So moving on to our mission, your personal mission. What I do on a daily basis that brings me joy, abundance, resources, financial sustainability, and connection to the people who I most align with. Doing and being what makes me feel good. That's the mission. So the example of my mission is building masterful, passionate veterinary teams and individuals offering what is best for the pet, pet owner, veterinary team, and veterinary hospital. So again, these are just examples. I don't want these to tie you into it. It's just allowing you to see how I've created that for myself. And these truly are my drivers and how I, I determine what I do in a day, how I determine my priorities, how I plan my week by my values, my vision, and my missions. And in your exercise, it asks you more about your career. So now I'm going to read to you a poem. Continue to work on your statements. And you may not be able to do this right away. You might have to come back to this. You can re review the video a time or two. You may just go through the questions on your exercise sheet and think about them without writing them down yet it may take you a little while to cultivate that this and that's fine and know too that once you do write something down maybe review this in another 21 days when it takes for for what it takes us to create new habits and see if it still aligns you might are you may already want to make some tweaks and adjustments already because you're actively engaging in these values and they're becoming stronger and, and more potent and more valuable to you as a person, um, helping to guide that ship and that rudder for you in your daily goals and even those goals that we set long-term. So this is uh, not really a poem. It's, it's just a very wonderful, powerful, articles, document that I think Marianne Williamson wrote. Her words lift our humanity and inspire the greatness that exists in each of us. So you have this in your downloads that you can print this for yourselves. And I'm going to read it to you now. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. 
Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, or fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory that is within us. It is just, it is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. I just find that so moving. I hope you do too. One of my most favorite pieces to bring forth to people. You may have questions and certainly feel free to reach out to Mitty. And as you wind down this exercise and continue to contemplate this for the month of April, be sure to finish your um, exercises and forward them to Mitty so that you can get credit for these. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. And, and if you need to reach out to me as well, feel free. I know you have access to my email and other ways of getting a hold of me. I'm happy to work with you on this. All right, have a great April. Enjoy your spring and I will be in touch.